Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, let me take you to Twitter University and teach you something really insightful, really interesting that you will enjoy learning about. Hey, this is a controversial video, no doubt about that. I will get a lot of flank. Even some unicorns will come after me. So I really hope that you will support me in terms of making these rational arguments. And I would love your support on this video. Also, the point of this video is that you can learn a ton of things by reading and following good accounts on Twitter. So if you feel that my account is good, please follow me. Similarly, you can learn a lot through audio platforms. And one of my favorite audio platforms is Cuckoo FM, who are the sponsors of this video. I absolutely love learning a range of different topics from Cuckoo FM. Whenever I'm working out or just aimlessly walking, I do listen to some books on Cuckoo FM and I will jot those down in the description box. So let us get the video started and let me take you to my Twitter account first and foremost. And this is a post that I wrote today morning and it started gaining a lot of traction. I got a lot of questions that Akshat, can you explain even further? Because this is such an important topic that we end up taking a lot of credit cards. We end up taking a lot of buy now, pay later cards, BNPL cards. So are they good? Are they bad? What are your viewpoints around it? So this is an honest one-on-one -on -one conversation from that front. Usually what will happen is that if you go online, if you Google, you just type out how to build credit history, how to use credit cards, you will only see good, good things about these things. Why? Because there is a lot of incentive at play. No one is going to tell you the other side or the dark side of these things. So honestly, I'm putting out that point of view. Disclaimer is that this is not a personal attack on you. If you are a credit card user or buy now, pay later type of card user, this is not a personal attack on you. I'm genuinely putting out rational economic arguments. Very happy to hear counter arguments around that. Okay, so let me take you through this thread. This is a good learning thread. So let us go through it together. So point number one is that in India, a lot of people are creating this ruckus that in India, the credit card penetration is only 3%, 4%. This is bad, this, that. Financial inclusion is not there. No, there is a reason why there is only 3 to 4% credit card rate in India. India is a growing economy and it is a low income country, unfortunately, and our sovereign risk is very high. What does these things mean, right? These are macroeconomic terms. So let me just quickly spend a minute there explaining it. So in simple word, what it means is that see, basically the cost of credit in India is relatively very, very high compared to other parts of the world. Why is that? Because for example, imagine this, that if you, you person watching this, if you have to give a hundred rupee loan to the Indian government, vis-a-vis, -vis, if you have to give hundred rupee loan to the US government and both the governments tell you that we will pay you exactly 2% rate of interest, to which country will you lend? Please keep your patriotic sentiments aside. The logical rational argument there is that you are most likely to lend to the US. Why? Because it's a safer country, so to say it's more developed. So the default rate of US is likely to be low compared to India. So that's the same rational argument that you can make that, for example, when you go to HDFC bank to avail a bank loan, then if you have a great credit history, if you're reliable, if you have good bank balance, all that stuff, and you are availing loan, so you might get it at 8%. But if a poor person goes to a bank or a microfinance institute, he or she takes a loan, they might be getting it at 15%, 20% also. I'm not kidding. Google, right? What microfinance loans in India are. So the point being that the poorer that a country is or the poorer a person is, the cost of credit for them goes up. But good thing in India is that our debt problem right now is very manageable because India has been very responsible. We as a country have a saving habit. So we save first, spend later. That is how our generations have been raised. Go speak with your parents, speak with your grandparents. They will all exactly tell you the thing that I'm telling you. That save first, spend later. This is how our entire country has been built. And even at the government level, the good thing that our governments, I'm not talking about any specific government, I'm talking about governments in general that have been in the past, present, all that stuff. If we aggregate all that, the government have acted responsibly in India in terms of showing financial prudence. What does that mean? For example, during 2020 COVID, you might have seen that US went on to a rampage and it started printing note after note and it started taking so much debt. But India did not do such a thing or India could not rather do such a thing because RBI gets very worried about increasing debt in the country. Why relates to the previous point that the cost of capital in India is high, sovereign risk is high, the rate at which the US can increase its debt, India can't increase its debt at that same rate. So we have to be a responsible debt oriented nation. We can't willy nilly take debts. The word of the day today is willy nilly. So let me know what does that mean? So RBI gets worried with any type of bad debt that is happening in the economy. Now bad debt can happen at multiple levels. For example, the government can introduce bad debt by printing money excessively and taking a bunch of really bad actions. So RBI gets worried because of government debt. 
Similarly, RBI gets worried about individual debt also. For example, there are only a handful of institutions in India that can issue credit cards. Now, what are credit cards at the end of the day? Credit cards is an instrument through which people like you and me, small retail people, we end up taking secured or unsecured loans, mostly unsecured loans. Let me very quickly give you the context of what unsecured loan is versus secured loans. Now, secured loans means something like in which a collateral is kept. If you take a home loan, then your home becomes a collateral. So in case you're not able to pay your EMI, that's a secured loan in a way because the government can sell off your house and recover its money. So that's secured debt. On the flip side, majority of the credit card works on unsecured loans. Unsecured loan simply means that there is nothing backing it up. If you decide not to pay your credit card bills, yes, it will hurt your credit history, but the bank can't do much beyond a point. They will keep on harassing you, all that stuff. That's separate. But even that, they can do it up to a certain point. So the point that I want to drive home through this conversation is very simple and this is the first key takeaway that this unsecured debt is very very dangerous in a country like India. Now if you take a look at this flowchart what happens is that this credit card facilitates something called as unsecured loans and this unsecured credit card loans are given either through banks or NBFCs. Now very very important and let us understand this point through an example. If you take something like HDFC bank vis-a-vis -vis, if you take any NBFC I will not name it so pick any NBFC who do you think is doing a good job in giving out useful loans and loans that will not result in defaults the answer please comment and I'm sure that all of you will say HDFC bank because their loan book is solid they verify customers they give out loans only to people who are in jobs who have the ability to repay so all good good things so if something like HDFC bank is issuing a credit card, it still makes sense because the default of that credit card loan is likely to be low. On the flip side, if you take a look at NBFCs, now NBFCs might end up giving loan to more risky people down this funnel. So here the risk is high because if you are giving loans to people who can't service the loan, then it becomes a problem. And this is the reason why that there are only two NBFCs, SBI cards and Bank of Baroda cards that get to issue credit cards in India. This is the theory behind it. And let me wrap up this part of conversation by telling you the story of subprime crisis. Exactly this thing played out in the US when in 2008, why did the subprime crisis take place? Subprime crisis took place in the US for the simple fact that the banks there got hold of people who had no paying capacity. They ended up giving them loans that you know what, even if you don't have a job, no problem, take loans and buy a house because the housing prices will forever keep on going up. But those people started defaulting in mass numbers. Now, as a result, if thousands and thousands of people started defaulting on their home loans, the housing prices crashed and even that collateralized or secured loan became a huge problem that impacted the entire world. Now, this brings us to the next part of the story, which is around the BNPL cards or fancy credit cards. Now, what is the operating mechanics of BNPL cards? The operating mechanics of BNPL cards is very simple. They partner with NBFCs and in many cases, highly risky NBFCs. They give out loans to whom? To students, to young people, all that stuff. Now, is that good? Is that bad? Let us have a very quick discussion on that at a macro level. So first and foremost, if you have understood the story so far, you will clearly realize that the debt is being taken by risky customers. Why risky? Because they are giving out to young people who have no prior history of work, who have no means of earning as of now, and they are being given loans. For example, if you go and ask anyone from these BNPL companies that to whom are they giving out loans, they will say that we are giving out fancy cards to people to whom banks like HDFC and bunch of other good institutes are saying no to. So for example, if I'm a student and if I'm not getting a credit card from HDFC or Kotec or ICICI bank, I will go to a BNPL company and tell them that, hey, give me a credit card because I'm not getting credit cards here. And of course, they are going to give you a fancy card because they are making money from you. And I'll explain how they are making money from you. But the point is that I am a risky customer and I can definitely default because I anyways do not have any major source of income and majority of the banks will not give me a loan. Therefore, I'm coming to these BNPL companies. Second key point that you need to understand is the debt is being issued by risky agencies. And these are not sound banks like HDFC, which will do a proper due diligence and all that stuff. These debt giving agencies is also super risky. So what ends up happening is that this creates a lot of risk within the system. Now, the way any banking structure, banking system, NBFC system work is that they interlend to each other. Interlending means that HDFC will give loans to ICICI, ICICI will give to Kotec. 
all that stuff. Same chain happens in NBFCs also. Therefore, if some of the NBFCs default, then the entire chain collapses. And this is making the entire system very risky. Now you will say, Akshat, you have given like such negative commentary. I feel very depressed. But whenever I go and speak with these BNPL people, they say that, you know what? Take our card. It will allow you to build credit history. It will allow you to do this. It will help you go to the moon, all that stuff. Okay. So let us understand the point about building credit history. Now in India, there is something called a Sybil score. Now that Sybil score is generated from a range of different things, but there are two key points that I would like to highlight that number one, if you take loans very frequently, it is a bad thing. It will impact your score negatively. Think about it. If you are in the constant habit of taking loan after loan after loan, does that indicate to any loan giving agency that you are a good asset? No, right? Yes. Once in a while, if you're taking loan, it makes sense that you have taken loan for some specific purpose. You have paid it off. Great. Awesome. But if you get into that mad habit of taking loan after loan, one after the next thing, it does not reflect well on you from a credit history perspective. This is a simple rational argument. Now, the second concept is around the credit utilization. Now, credit utilization simply means that let's say that you have a loan limit of taking 100 rupees. You constantly take loans of 90 rupees. Sometimes you take 80 rupees. Sometimes you take 99 rupees. Then you take 100 rupees. You are utilizing almost 100% capacity of this. Now, what happens in any type of BNPL apps is and go and download it, right? Just literally open up your phone, try to download any. I'm not taking any names. Otherwise, I'll get sued. But go and open it. They will have a permission tab, right? So they will ask you to sign some NDA. They will ask you to sign that, hey, give us access to your camera, give us access to your contacts, give us access to your messages, all that stuff. They will also say that we will track your data and we will help you increase your credit limit. So what are you constantly doing? You're constantly hitting this credit utilization limit and that impacts your Sybil score negatively. Now you'll say, Akshat, what happens if my Sybil score is bad? So what will happen is that you're a college student, you're using all these fancy cards. When you actually have to take education loan, when you actually have to buy a house, when you actually go to HDFC bank, they will say no to you because you have built a very poor credit history because you did not understand this basic concept of credit utilization and frequent loan taking. So in summary, point number one, from a macroeconomic viewpoint, credit or debt should flow to people who actually have productive use of that debt and credit. We should not be buying iPhones and laptops on debt. That is madness. Now, if you buy this word, I'm not going to say it. Probably the video will get banned. I don't know. This is not called as building credit history. In simple English, it is called as being stupid. Yeah, that is what it is. So find better use of debt. That is the simple concept here. Now comes the next and final point that in a high credit risk country like India, mindless debt should be avoided. This situation, if it keeps on going up at the rate at which it is growing, Many NBFCs will default simply because of the fact that the loans that are being given out to people via these credit cards, those are highly risky people and they will facilitate a mass default at some stage and that will be bad for our economy. I hope you enjoyed the video and this Twitter university class. Do follow me there and also check out Cuckoo FM. I will see you tomorrow.